Hey, it's Garrett Biss. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for checking out this video. So I've been talking a lot about the role of meaning uh, and how it correlates with addiction and how important it is in recovery. And one of the reasons I'm so passionate about it or why I bring it up so often is because meaning is one of the greatest contributing factors to whether or not somebody becomes addicted or somebody relapses if they're in recovery. And whether or not somebody has a strong sense of meaning or they lack a sense of meaning in their life, this is one thing that we can actually control. There's a lot of contributing factors that lead somebody down that path toward addiction that can't be controlled, whether it's genetic makeup, whether it's adverse childhood experience, whether it's some trauma that somebody faced or just the addictive nature of substances that somebody might be introduced to. All these things have strong correlation to or can be uh, causal factors for somebody manifesting addiction or relapsing in their recovery. But many of these things can't be controlled. You can't go back and undo adverse childhood experiences. You can't go back and undo a traumatic experience. You can't change your genetic makeup. But meaning can be just as important, if not more important, than many of these other factors. Uh, and it's one thing that you can control. Now, one of the reasons that I that this kind of like comes to mind for me, or one of the reasons that uh, I understand the importance, is by looking at some of the the populations that are at greatest risk for developing addiction. So many people that, uh, that manifest or fall into you know, addiction in their lifetime, they're exposed to addictive substances or behaviors early on. So while they're still in their adolescence and this does things that prime them to be more susceptible to addiction later on. But if you look at, there's some other populations that have very high rates of addiction and later, to, um, later in life manifestations of addiction. And when I look at them or when I compare them, what I, what I realize is that they all, the one thing they all have in common is that, that strong lack of meaning. So there's a, a lot of articles recently about how high a percentage or how high the numbers are for women in their 30s or you know late 20s, early 30s to 40, uh, and how high a correlation or how high a, um, a percentage of them are developing alcoholism. And what they're finding is uh, when they look at all the demographics, when they look at life situations, what they're finding is um, that many of them, it's when they go through a period where they lack a sense of meaning. For a lot of the, the women that are experiencing this or a high contributing factor to this, it's a lot of women who have, uh, they found a lot of their meaning and purpose either in an early profession that they had, which they then had to pull back from or leave when they started to have a children or other women who found a great sense of their meaning and identity and purpose in being a mother. And it's that time when the children are not at home as often, or the children aren't as uh, reliant on their mom's care for, uh, for their life, for their survival as they're going off to school, uh, starting kindergarten, whatever it is, uh, this can reduce a great sense of meaning. And if, uh, if it's not replaced with, if that sense of identity and meaning is not replaced with something else, this opens up a tremendous void and enter in those addictive substances behaviors. Another population or another, you know, kind of subgroup of our population that's having extremely high rates of addiction or one, one contributing factor to that addiction is people that are becoming opioid dependent. And many stories of people that are becoming opioid dependent are people that were injured either in an accident or something happened at work. Uh, they were in a car accident, something like that, and they're injured. And then they have some kind of surgery and they're prescribed opioids as painkillers. And the percentage of people that are going down that path and becoming addicted to opioids is very significant. And a lot of people are suggesting that it's just because of the addictive nature of the chemical that they're introducing to their body. But I would suggest it's there's more a relationship between the fact that a person is now, you know, think of somebody who's completely engaged, who has some, a sense of meaning in their life, they're engaged in work, uh, they're enjoying life, they're enjoying things that they're doing professionally, they're enjoying things in their life that they're doing when they're not working. And now you take somebody who goes through a, se a severe accident and now they're in tremendous amounts of pain. Well, when they're in that pain, they're also not engaging in those things that fulfill that sense of meaning and purpose in their life. And because they're losing that sense of meaning, because they're laid up, because you know they can't move like they once did, they can't participate in the activities that they once used to as they're recovering, that opens up a tremendous opportunity for addiction to come in. And that void that is created inside of us when we lack that strong sense of meaning and that purpose, these people are finding it filled with the euphoric effects of those opioids that's coming into their life. So now that pain that they don't have 
that strong sense of meaning or that they're not able to engage in those things that have a, that bring a strong sense of purpose or meaning in their life that void and that pain is filled by the opioids and i would suggest that that has as much if not more to do with why there's such a high uh, percentage of people that are going on painkillers for severe pain after an accident uh, I think that is just as likely a reason why there's so many people that become long-term opioid dependent because of the changes in their life and because of what they, they're missing from their life or what was taken away from their life during that same experience, not just the fact that that opioid was introduced to their body and the addictive natures of it. And one reason I think this and one reason I, I really suspect that this is the case is you look at other people who were exposed to high levels of opioids in their life. Uh, I talked earlier this week about a study of returning Vietnam veterans. And they found that as high as 20% of Vietnam veterans were using heroin regularly. And by definition, they were all heroin addicts as they were in country, as they were in service. And one reason that they suspect there was such a high percentage of Vietnam veterans that were using heroin as opposed to any other group of Americans that were off at war is because they didn't they didn't have that same sense of meaning you know if you take a, a, a world war one or world war two soldier and compare the sense of meaning that they have and what they're doing i mean there's a tremendous risk of the spread of communism and if you can go off and protect america and protect our way of life by contributing to something that that can fulfill a great sense of meaning but there's a lot of people that were involved in or shipped off to to participate in the vietnam war that didn't find as much uh, meaning from that they didn't they couldn't correlate their activities over there with something that they were protecting back home and because of that their activities in that high-risk environment in a very high and stressful environment oh, again opened up that door for a void inside because they were stressed out they were put in an environment um, many did not want to be there they found a way to cope with that pain by by introducing the, the heroin but when they came back you would suspect that if it was just the heroin alone and the addictive nature of the opioids alone that was the causal factor for somebody becoming long-term opioid dependent, then you would suspect that the same number of people that were using while they were in Vietnam would be continuing to use for long-term afterwards. What they found is after a year, only about 5% of those people that were addicted to heroin when they were serving or when they were in Vietnam were still using after a year. So that shows that there's not just the addictive nature of the drug that was introduced to their body, but something else is working there and something else is a major contributing factor. And what I believe it was is they came back, they re-engaged in things, they found some sense of meaning, they found that purpose uh, when they re-engaged with their families, when they started a career, when they started doing other things and bringing things into their life that brought a strong sense of meaning and purpose. So if you feel like you lack a sense of meaning and purpose, for one, it can be one of the greatest things that you can do to prevent, you know, as a preventative measure to reduce your risk of becoming addicted to a substance or behavior at some point in your life. If you're living in recovery, it can be one of the most important things that you can do to help build your resilience against relapse and ensure that you can thrive in your recovery by bringing that meaning into your life and by making sure that you, that make, that you maintain that strong sense of meaning in your life. Again, you can't go back and undo many of the other contributing factors, whether it's genetics, adverse childhood experience, traumas, things that you've gone through, you can't undo those things. But what you can do, what you can control, and why it's so important is because you can control the, the, the sense of strong meaning and purpose in your life. Uh, if you feel like you lack this, if you feel like this might be something that uh, that is causing you to, or is a risk factor for you for addiction or for relapse, uh, I highly recommend you do some work and try to establish, get clarity on your meaning, get clarity on your purpose so you can cultivate that strong sense in your life. Uh, if you would like to be a part of the five day challenge, we're kicking off in a couple days. We're gonna spend five days looking at ways that we can establish and cultivate greater meaning and purpose in our life. If you'd be interested, you can click the link below to find out more about that. And in five days, I will help you bring some greater sense of joy in your life, uh, bring some of those natural so sources of joy back into your life, get clear on what your meaning is, and then identify what your purpose is so that you can lean into that in your life. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please share your comments. Please share this video with anybody that needs to hear it. It's a very important topic, something that we need to talk about more and more as the number of people that are suffering uh, continues to increase. So you be well, and we'll see you in the next video.